Capoeira's origins are a pretty controversial topic. From theories studying that capoeira comes from a martial art hidden as a dance developed by African slaves because they were forbidden to train martial arts, all the way to theories about capoeira coming from indigenous Brazilian martial arts or dances. Knowing Capoeira's origins will not only help you understand the culture a lot better, but it will also make you fill in the gaps that you might not even knew you had about its actual history. So let's get into what I deem to be the closest version to reality and to what I have been taught by various Capoeira masters. The history of Capoeira is pretty mysterious and it has many tales. This why I'm going to use this book in order to tell you all about it. It all started in the 1500s when an explorer named Pedro Cabral arrived to Brazil. There were a population of people who were called the Brazilian Indians. The Portuguese men led by Pedro Cabral tried to enslave them, but they quickly died in captivity or ran away back to their home. And so the Portuguese tried to import slaves from Africa to Brazil. Three men and women were loaded into the ships in inhumane circumstances. Many died on the way to Brazil. The origins of capoeira, whether African or Brazilian, is still a mystery. Unfortunately, there aren't many documents from that era regarding capoeira. So just imagine how hard was it for them to be taken away from their homes by men with weapons, suffering the cruise to Brazil where they were cramped, many of them got sick and depressed. Those who didn't behave were thrown to the ocean, leaving their beautiful lives back in Africa. Arriving in Brazil and being treated as commodity, being sold to the white men who enslaved them. In Africa, they had many different tribes and each of them had his own culture. In Brazil, the different tribes were mixed and thus they absorbed each other's cultures. So we can imagine that after several decades, a new form of cultural expression was born. It involves a dance, a fight, a game, and music from different cultures that came from different African regions. But obviously it wasn't that simple. Capoeira and other forms of African expression were prohibited by the slave owner. Up until 1814, these cultural expressions were permitted. It was mostly to get them to release the oppression so they won't rebel. And also to bring out several differences between the different African groups. The Portuguese were utilizing the divide and conquer approach. Things really changed when Napoleon invaded Portugal. In 1892, Capoeira was outlawed because it gave Africans a sense of nationality. It also developed self-confidence in the capoeira practitioners. It created small cohesive groups of agile fighters and sometimes slaves would injure themselves when training and thus they couldn't work as well. Capoeira at that time had little in common with capoeira practice today. Here's a photo and a description by a German artist describing a very violent act with no acrobatic jumps or ground movements and not even kicks and not even using the musical instrument called Birimbao. At those days, Capoeira was accompanied by a drum, hand clapping and singing. Since then, Capoeira has changed and evolved a lot. There's a theory saying that Capoeira was a martial art disguised as a dance. In this book, the authors say this has no actual sense because other dances were also repressed. In 1888, the Golden Law was written which abolished slavery in Brazil. Many freed black men didn't find their spot in the socioeconomic order. Then capoeiristas with fighting skills quickly descended to criminality. The book tells that gangs were formed and were used by both monarchists and republicans to exert pressure on the break to break up political rallies. Then the dagger and the switchblade were introduced to capoeira. 
in the 1800s, the persecution and the confrontation with the police continued. The art slowly started to extinguish. That happened in Rio de Janeiro and Recife, leaving capoeira only in Bahia. Later on, in the 1930s, in Salvador, Mestre Bimba Manuel dos Reis Machado opened the first capoeira academy. That was only possible because the government wanted to promote capoeira as Brazil's national sport. Mestre Bimba was smart enough in order to name his capoeira academy in a different, more palatable name for the audience who still think capoeira is for criminals. He called it in translation, which is never exactly the same as it is in Portuguese, Centro de Cultura Física Regional Baiana, the center for physical culture in Bahia's region. In 1941, another important figure of capoeira, Mestre Pastia, opened his academy not far away. Mestre Bimba was introduced to capoeira when he was 12 years old by a master called African Benchinho. You'll be surprised to know that Mestre Bimba opened his school when he was only 18 years old. There he started teaching what he called the regional fight of Bahia or Capoeira Regional. Bimba was a feared fighter which earned the name Tres Pancadas, three hits, because it was told that you won't survive more than three hits, the fight will be over. Bimba differently from Capoeira at that time that was mostly practiced by black men has been teaching in his schools the upper class children of the white man. His method was based in eight sequences of predetermined moves. He essentially sacrificed the ritual, the game and slower paced rhythm in favor of greater aggressiveness and fighting spirit. That made it more appealing to a broader audience of people not only to people who were interested in connecting back to their African roots, also for those who are interested in learning how to defend themselves. Many of his pupils, as Capoeira Regional became more prevalent and more known, Capoeira Angola has lost its space. It says that Mestre Pastia and his group were practically the only ones that preserved the traditional style. Master Pastia was born in 1898. The book says he learned capoeira from an African that came from Angola named Banjitu. Banjitu took Master Pastia under his wing after he saw he was beaten repeatedly by an older boy. At the age of 16, Master Pastia became some sort of a bouncer in a gambling house. Due to his charisma and his friendly way, his capoeira academy became a meeting place for different artists and intellectuals who wanted to see the traditional capoeira angola. Pastia became to be known as the philosopher of capoeira. He said that capoeira is for men, women and children. Those who are not learning are those who are not interested in learning. The book says that unfortunately government authorities under the pretext of reforming the Lago do Pelourinho where he had his academy, confiscated his class space, although they promised a new one, they never came through on that promise. In the 1940s, Bahia's capoeira's teachers and players started to immigrate first to Rio de Janeiro and then to Sao Paulo. With time, a more systematic approach was added to capoeira practice. Together came a new chord, a new belt system that gave it a more clean and a more organized look. In the 70s and the 80s were the first time that capoeira has begun being taught and performed outside of Brazil. I believe capoeira has reached Israel somewhere between the 80s to the 90s. I was born in 92 and I've started capoeira in 2002. If you're interested in learning how to improve, and I'm a huge nerd when it comes to capoeira method, I want to teach you how to be an autodidact. I want to teach you how to train at home. So this is a video I made about how to improve faster in capoeira so you can cut the learning curve and reach a high level by training at home by yourself.